Art of Parenting, a podcast dedicated to creating supportive community for new parents. I'm your host, Nikki Rishi, and today we have a special episode focusing on newborn sleep. Join me as an incredible woman shares a passion for supporting moms on their wellness journey. We meet Angela today, a mother who transformed her struggles with her daughter's sleep issues and postpartum depression into a mission to help others. After experiencing the life-changing effects of sleep coaching, Angela, who once co-slept, rocked, and fed her baby to sleep, is now dedicated to assisting tired parents. She understands deeply the toll of sleeplessness and is here to help families achieve the restful sleep they need and deserve. Let's dive into our conversation with Angela to learn more about her remarkable journey and dedication to helping parents. Welcome, Angela. So glad to have you on our podcast today. Yes, likewise. Thank you. Let's dive right into it. Um, So tell me, what does an ideal daily routine look like for newborns? Can you help us with some sleepy signals or ways to read baby sleepy cues? Those are the questions we get the most often. Definitely. Sure. So it can be really challenging with a newborn to kind of figure out, like, should I just kind of go with whatever my newborn is doing or should I like make a very strict and hard and fast routine schedule Um, and what I suggest parents do is you're going to take the whole 24 hour day and you're going to split it in half so that means for most parents uh, you know maybe your day is going to start at 7 so from 7 a.m to 7 p.m we're going to think of that as the daytime and then 7 p.m to 7 a.m we're going to think of that as nighttime um, so it's, we can't exactly put a newborn on a schedule like nine o'clock is their first nap, you know, 1030 is the second nap because they are very much, you know, still trying to figure out day and night, but we can do little things to kind of nudge them in that direction. Um, so like the first thing being splitting the day right in the ha- right in half and then setting up some, some, some cues, some triggers for them to help them know what's expected of them. So when it is time for nap, you're going to put them in a a pitch black room. You're gonna put some white noise playing for them. You're gonna make sure they're swaddled and nice and comfortable. And then when it's time to wake up, time to start their day, we want them in, we want the the rooms to be super, super bright. So pull those curtains back, turn on all the lights. And if you're nursing, formula feeding, it doesn't matter for this, but when you're feeding them like that's when you want a lot of sun a lot of light shining on them that's going to help them be really really awake and take in really good uh full feeds and then that's going to help them sleep better a lot of times babies will especially newborns they will just eat until they don't feel hungry and then they get a really quick 10 20 minute nap they're wide awake screaming ready to eat again and it can just uh, has this like vicious it's a vicious cycle and it does tend to throw things off, um, you know, just right from the get go. And then as far as as um, sleepy cues, again, it can be a bit challenging to figure out with the newborn because they're they can't do so much with their hands yet. Like so, as they get older, you're going to see. Okay, they rub their eyes. That means they're tired. A newborn, they they kind of don't know what to what to do with their hands, at least for for the most part. Um, but you can tell after, really after they've been awake for about 45 to 60 minutes, they're ready for, for another nap. They're ready to get to sleep again. They're, it's just, it's very, very brief periods of waking for them. Um, but some things you might see that they arch their back. That definitely can be a sign that they're getting tired. Um, if they can, there are some that can maneuver their hands a bit. They might rub their eyes or tug on their ear. Definitely, that's a good sign. Um, they might lose interest in whatever is going on. They're just not really paying attention to the book that they were just, uh, you know, really enthralled with. Um, and then, I mean, really, it is the time that's your best, your best indication as for a newborn is that 45 minute mark. So really try to get them down for a nap or for bed, you know, after just being awake for 45 minutes. Gosh, yes. As the, as the meme goes, the popular meme goes, eat, poop, sleep, repeat. <laughs> it's it's a life in the day of a newborn. Uh, you know, you were talking about something very important initially and throughout 
uh, the answer before, and that's schedules. It's so important, whether it's a newborn, infant, toddler, and you know, even as adults, schedules, routine is is key to success um, for both the parents and the, the person themselves. So as parents, um, let's talk about how can we gradually establish a sleep schedule um, for the baby and what are some playful yet calming activities to help our babies drift off to sleep if those even exist. Right, yes, yeah, schedule is just, it's so, so important because I don't know about you, but when I became a mom, I was like terrified, like it was the scariest thing, but knowing that, okay, I have to do this, that and that, okay, that's, I just gotta do it every day. <laughs> that gave me a sense of like peace and security um, so I would recommend mom put baby on an eat, play, sleep schedule, schedule <laughs> similar to eat, poop, sleep, you know. Um, but, you know, so like the second they wake up from their nap, second they wake up for their day, I would, you know, quick give a diaper change, feed them a little bit of tummy time or just, you know, another quiet activity could be like looking at pictures of family members, uh, reading a book. Even like baby massage, that can be really helpful, especially if you have a colicky baby or a baby that's just very unsettled uh, most of the time. Um, and then you would shift into nap time routine. So keeping on that eat, play, sleep schedule is is really paramount. Um, and I wouldn't recommend like a newborn mom really does much more than that in the first couple weeks. Like. Let's just try to feed in a um, in a really bright room, sleep in a dark room, white noise, eat, play, sleep, get them down to sleep after 45 minutes of being awake. You know, I wouldn't put too much uh, pressure or more expectations on them than, than just that, so. But, you know, speaking of pressure expectations, I, I remember with the twins, it, it just felt like it was nonstop, right? And, and it did feel stressful. Um, and there's of course joy in everything that, that we have to just be able to find. And I'm sure there's tips and tricks to finding that joy through through this routine um, that we're talking about. Um, so maybe first of all, we could come up with some times um, that are out there that is best to feed, tuck the babies in for naps that may not allow us to feel less stressed. So are there best times to do that? And then also how can we turn these times into joyful moments for both the parents and the baby that we actually look forward to? Right, um, yeah, I, I suppose there could be times throughout the day. Um, I think it's a great idea for mom to, to go on a walk every day, like, or at least get out of the house, even if it's just like, even if all she can do is go to the mailbox and back with baby, like that's a start. That's great. And then that can become a, an enjoyable time. Something you look forward to as baby gets older, they're going to be like, come on, we got to do our routine. Let's get out there. You know? <laughs> um, so that would be what I'd recommend for that. I also remember circadian rhythm is so important. Um, you know, my previous sleep coach would tell, us that it's important for the babies to, I mean, the walks are important, why? Because they can be out in the sun, they can be exposed to the natural sunlight, and that's important for them to understand how to regulate their own biorhythm and then get in that process eventually as they move from newborn to the infancy stage, right? And so walks are important, fresh air, but then you also talked about dark rooms, right? Does it need to be pitch black during naps with a noise machine? That's part of sleep training that a lot of coaches do post newborn phase. Um, again, let's talk a little bit more about when you expose them to the sun versus when you do more of the pitch black nap time routine. What's the difference, I guess? Absolutely, so for, in not just my opinion, I was, I was gonna say, but science says that the more light that we're exposed to, the less melatonin is in our brain um, versus, you know, if we're in a pitch black room, we're going to feel tired and sleepy. So if you think, think back to like the days of your life where it's been a rainy day, you've probably felt tired, like and you drag a bit more than a normal, like sunny, bright kind of day. 
And that's all because of melatonin. So it really does control how sleepy we, we feel. And, you know, so if you're in a darker room, pitch black room, melatonin is as high as it can be. You know, if you're in a really, really bright room, it's as low as it can be. So, you know, if you go from being outside and it's bright and shiny, and then you go inside and it's pitch black, well, now we just flooded the system with melatonin, making sleep that much easier, so. Right, and I am glad that there is some method to the madness there. Um, and then let's talk growth and milestones, right? Of course, um, there's different transition phases. We talked newborn, infancy, toddler, childhood, and through each developmental milestone or each um, phase needs change, routines change. I recall again with the twins, it went from three naps to two naps to one nap. Now we're dealing with at three and a half, do we do no naps? Uh, or, you know, we continue sticking it out till kindergarten. Um, and so with with babies, um, their needs are changing, I think almost every two weeks. It's it's incredible, the journey. So moms really, you know, in addition to hopefully taking care of themselves and understanding so many different things to do, they should know how fast that development is and the routine might be changing. So how can we adjust the routine to feel more natural and exciting to be a part of this development journey? I think a huge part of parenting is, is finding your village. So if you find your village, um, you know, the people that are going to support you, give you helpful advice, hopefully, and not judgment. <laughs> um, they're going to support you. Hopefully it, it maybe can become friendships that maybe they can watch your child at some point. You can maybe watch theirs, etc. That's going to really help you through those transitions because it's like, okay, uh, my child hasn't slept well for the last two weeks. They used to sleep well, what's happening, you know? So if you have a group of other moms or maybe it's, you know, a grandmother that obviously has been there, done that, and you can kind of share your ideas, your thoughts, concerns, um, and bounce things off of them, then it gives you gives you that perspective and, they, and it gives you that support, you know? So they might say like, uh, yeah, it sounds like the four month sleep regression, but it'll go away, you know, give it time, right. keep doing all these good things that you're doing, you know, um, and then it can be helpful for you because you're going to learn things. And then when the other moms have questions, then you can help them. So it's like a really good give and take and back and forth. And like having that community is just, it's just paramount because parenting is, it's lonely, you know, and then it's also like the most important job you'll ever do, but mm -hmm. there's no like real training for it. There's no <laughs> HR, there's like, you know, it's like, so you kind of have to make your own community, your own like company, I guess. <laughs> you can, and, and I think coaching um, and knowledge is an important part of it, which is why we have built Miss Poppins in the first place, right? I think awareness and being in the know about what's forthcoming, what can you do will well equip you to be feeling better about the changes rather than be taken aback by the changes. So 100% your community, friends, family network, your virtual digital community, which is what we've built through Miss Poppins, and in addition, coaching, right? Like we have mentors and guides throughout our careers, personal and professional lives. Same way, um, you know, finding that coach and learning from the best and understanding what's forthcoming is so important, just like Angela would help through this journey um, of newborn phase um, with sleep and so many other needs that would come. And, and with that, I appreciate all the words of wisdom, Angela. Thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And as we wrap up the special episode of Miss Poppins, The Art of Parenting, um, to Angela and to our listeners, we hope you found today's discussion on baby rhythms, crafting the ideal schedule for your newborn, both informative and inspiring. Remember that your child's well-being is paramount, especially during the holiday season. Thank you. We encourage you to put into practice the strategies and advice shared by Angela and if you need further guidance or support, don't hesitate to reach out and download the Miss Poppins app where you can connect with our team of experts, including postpartum, sleep, lactation, and many more coaches. 
all dedicated to helping you master the art of parenting. This is Nikki signing off. Thank you.